Hey class, in this video we'll be taking the derivatives of inverse functions. We'll be evaluating those. Uh, by the end of the video, you should have a good understanding of how to find the derivative of an inverse function. So let's start off with some definitions here below. Uh, here are some theorems, things that you should know, some facts about inverse functions. Uh, let f be a function whose domain is an interval i, some some domain, some arbitrary domain. If f has an inverse function, then the following statements are true. f is continuous on its domain, then f inverse is continuous on its domain. If f is increasing on its domain, then that means that f inverse is increasing on its domain. So I want to go ahead and just draw a picture of what that looks like. So let's say that you have a function uh, when x goes to infinity, that means that y goes to infinity. If the function is monotonic, we have talked about that term, monotonic. Well, the inverse function means, well, it looks like this. Uh, this time, the new domain for f inverse, if that is increasing, then that must mean that the range for the inverse is also increasing. Means, And that kind of backs up what statement 2 is trying to say. Statement three is similar, but now it's decreasing. F is decreasing on its domain, then that means that F inverse is decreasing on its domain. If F is differentiable on an interval containing C and F prime of C is not zero, then we say that F inverse is differentiable at F of C. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, our formula, which you should already pretty much be familiar with if you saw the introduction to this topic. Uh, this is the derivative uh, of an inverse function, uh, the formula for that. So we're going to go ahead and apply this formula into our first example. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this notation here. Here it says find g inverse prime of 2. That means taking the, that means finding the derivative of the inverse function at a particular value 2. Now one thing you need to know, what, what I would do is I would probably start out by writing the equation, the, the formula with the, the, the indicated value which is 2 using what's in yellow right here. So 1 over g prime and I'm gonna stop right here. Well how do you find g prime? Well you're given g, you can find g prime uh, quite easily by taking the derivative of this function right here. So they, they'll give you a hint. They'll, they'll give you something to work with. Um, and then inside, we're going to be taking, we're going to be plugging in g inverse of 2. Well, g inverse of 2, what does that mean? g inverse of 2. Well, that means that what value of x gives me 2 for g because you, you know that inverse functions the x for the x for the regular function becomes a new y and the y of the regular function becomes a new x so saying that g inverse of 2 equals something is equivalent to saying well what is that something what is that something plugged into g makes 2? Well, let's go ahead and put it over here. 2 equals the square root of x plus 1. How do I solve the x that gives me 2 for g? Well, it's like trying to solve for x. Isolate the x. Well, before I isolate the x, I need to get rid of this, this square root right here. So by taking the square of both sides, I get 4 is equal to 2 x plus 1, and then at subtracting 1 to both sides, I get 3. So for, for g, g of 3 gives me 4, I'm sorry, not 4, gives me 2, then that must mean that g inverse of 2 is 3, by definition of inverse functions. Well, I know what this is now. This is 3. I can go ahead and plug this in, in here in the red replace that with 3. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and 
write out g in uh, g inverse prime of two is equal to one over g prime of three. Well, this is now just your regular calculus step right here. If you know what g is, which is here, then you know what g prime of three would be. So taking the derivative of g, you have to make it derivative friendly at first. You can't take the derivative of square root so easily just by leaving it as a square root. You have to write it as a half power. That's what it means to be a square root. Now I can go ahead and use chain rule, the power rule version of the chain rule. So dropping the half, I'm sorry, I messed up when I put prime. This is just g. I just rewrote it. Now g prime would be 1 over 2 x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. Taking the derivative of the inside by chain rule is just 1. Now let's go ahead and plug in 3 because I need to find out what that value is to find my inverse derivative. So 1 over 2, 3 plus 1 to the negative 1 half. I don't have to write times 1. Times 1 is just 1. Well, that is the same thing as saying 1 over 2, 4 to the 1 half, which is 1 over 2 times 2, which is 1 fourth. So, so g prime of 3 is equal to a fourth. Now I can replace that in here. I'm still using the, the, the formula. Then that is 1 over 1 fourth. Well, 1 fourth goes into 1 four times. And my final answer is g inverse prime of 2 is 1 fourth. I'm sorry, one, just 4. And that's the answer to um, the first example. The second example we have here, um, we have we have an example of a function value, the derivative uh, at that point, and we're asked to find the inverse derivative at a particular point. So it says here sometimes we are given all the pieces we need, and then we just have to just put them together to get the answer. So let's go ahead and just write this equation now, like the way we did in the, in the previous example. Using the, the the formula provided for us in the last page, this is one over f prime of f inverse of five. Well, I don't have a function to work with. I just have the value of the function. Well, you should know that if f of three is equal to five, then that must mean that f inverse of five is equal to three by definition of functions being inverses of each other, just the opposite x and y are just flipped. Okay, so let's go ahead and just substitute that three in here. One over f prime of three. Well, what is one over f prime of three? I don't have a derivative to work with. But like the instruction said, it's already given to you. So that would mean 1 over 7 halves, which is 2 over 7. The next example says, find g inverse prime of 2 given and the equation of the tangent line of g inverse x at x equals 2. That's probably a typo right here. Um, that's my fault. So let's go ahead and find the equation of the tangent line. So the equation of the tangent line at x equals 2. We need to find first, we need to find the inverse derivative at 2 using the formula. That is the same thing as g prime, g inverse of 2. Okay, so I need to go ahead and look at my table. My table here gives me all the values. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this, this column and this row. I see that when 
I see that when X, I'm sorry, wrong column, wrong row, I'm sorry, wrong row. Taking a look at this row, this column. I see that when X is equal to one, G is equal to two. When X is one, the value of G is two. That must mean that G inverse of two is one by definition of two functions being inverses of each other. So I can go ahead and replace this one into G inverse of two. Proceeding with the formula, I have one over G prime of one. And if I look at my table, do I have the derivative at one? And it's right here. The derivative of g at x equals 1 is 4. So it's 1 over 4, and that's straightforward, which is 1 fourth. Now, you may come up with a problem where you have to do a little bit of extra work. Um, in this case, this problem does not give you much. It gives you a function, which you cannot find the inverse by hand. It's not possible using algebraic methods. Um, so, you, so what you have to do is you have to just use the equation of the derivative of an inverse. So let's go ahead and just write this uh, using the equation, the formula. So f inverse prime of 3 means that you have 1 over f prime of the inverse at 3 by the formula. I'm not making anything up. This is all formula. Well, this means that this means that f of x equals 3. So what value what value of x plugged into this function gives me 3? So you have to just think about it. Um, sometimes these problems are not straightforward, um, but I have seen a problem like this come out of like on an AP test or some sort of AP practice test. If you just play around with numbers that are small, like two, f of two, let's see if f of two, let's see if x equals two works. When you raise two to the third, you get eight over four plus two minus one, which is the same thing as 2 plus 2 minus 1, which is the same thing as 3. So it seems like when when x is 2, y is 3. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Well, what is the inverse of 3? And that is 2. And now I can go ahead and plug that in here. Proceeding with the formula, I can say that this is 1 over f prime of 2. However, I don't know what the derivative at 2 is. Luckily, I do have a function that I can find the derivative of using power rule. So let's go ahead and do some side work. 1 fourth 3x squared plus 1. That's a derivative of the function in yellow. Let me just clean it up a little bit. 3 fourths x squared plus 1. Now let's plug in 2. Let's plug in 2 into your derivative and let's see if that gives you anything. 4 thirds, I'm sorry, 3 fourths, 2 squared plus 1. These two will cancel, giving you 3 plus 1, which is 4. So f prime of 2 is just 4, and that completes the final example for this lesson.